The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. Before we get started today, I need to battle Wisconsin's icy winter, specifically the ice. So I took some PVC pipe, some duct tape, a bucket and an air compressor and made a salt rifle. I will spray the salt everywhere and winter cannot stop me now. Take that, Winter. In today's episode, we're going to work on a surface mount soldering tutorial. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. A few episodes ago, we took a standard run-of-the-mill toaster oven and transformed it into a solder reflow oven. In today's episode, I want to go over preparation of solder reflow and circuit boards when you're using it with an oven like this. So this is a board that I designed for a product that I sell to video game companies. I designed it in Eagle and I made it to use surface mount components. So what I'm gonna do in this episode is show you how to place these components without using a stencil, which you may not have, and the best way to place them so that they will reflow correctly. We'll put it in the oven, see what kind of reflow we get, and then I'll show you how to fix any errors that might occur. So there's two basic ways you can apply your solder paste to your PCB. One is to have a stencil made, either a nice metal one that you would get with the PCBs, or you can laser cut one out of Captain or other types of plastic. And what you do with a stencil is you put it in place, then you put some paste at the end and then you squeegee it over. It's very much like screen printing. Except for using the screen, there's just big gaping holes for where the paste goes. The other way, and the way I'm going to do it today, is to just take your paste, I got this from Element 14, and uh, have a nice needle and a syringe and basically drop by drop, put it onto the board. And so I'm doing it this way because, you know, if you home brewed an oven, this should also be a home brew method and using a laser cutter to make a stencil is not home brew. So I'm using these 1206 size surface mount capacitors. A 1206 is actually fairly large for a surface mount part. Uh, so obviously if you're making something like a iPad, you wouldn't use these large components. But since I knew I was going to be hand assembling these, I was like, well, I'll use the larger parts because why make it more difficult on myself than it needs to be? Now this guy here, this is a, uh, a tantalum capacitor and it's polarized. So when I put it in place, I have to make sure that I have I don't know if you can see that the little arrow, that's the positive. Make sure that's in the right direction, there we go. Now when you stick the parts in the paste, it'll kind of hold them in place because the paste is kind of sticky. You still don't want to bump it around too much. And the parts will self-align when they're in the oven, but you still want to put them on as straight as you can because, you know, might as well do it as well as you can. All right, uh, I'm going to attach these shift registers next. Now I'm kind of smearing the paste over the pins and it might look kind of sloppy, and it is. What happens is when I reflow this, the paste will adhere to the pins on the integrated circuits and the exposed pads on the motherboard. It'll actually wick itself up where it needs to go. Instead of taking the time to try to individually hit all these pins, it's better to just get uh, good coverage over all of them and then let the reflow oven do the hard work. Let your fingers do the walking. So the way I do this, I mean, obviously a pick and place machine would do this with a vacuum, but I'm just gonna set them here. And again, you've, you can kind of move it around. I'm gonna look at it top down. I just, you know, basically line up that one and that one and they'll be good. It's also good to have it fairly centered as well. There's not always a pin one marker on the surface mount, so sometimes you have to look at the text in this case, there's a line here which tells us where the top of the chip is, but not all chips have that. So if you look at the text, how it's going across like this, reading a book. So the text always is going to go toward the right side of the chip. So even if you don't have a line, you can tell where to put it by looking at the text. Okay. That's pretty good. Now this is the PIC 32128F. I'm not exactly sure the part number. I have it written down someplace. 
This is a lot finer pitch than the shift registers. So this potentially might need a few little tweaks after we reflow it. But you know, it's still better than doing it by hand. Even if you're not using a stencil and you have to rework a few things afterwards, the amount of time you save is still worth it. You know, the amount of time you spend fixing a few bridges will be less than the time it would have taken to solder everything by hand. With this pick chip, we want to make sure it's very well centered. Again, it will self-center itself in the oven, but there's so many small pins they could easily bridge and get, if, even if it's a little off, that'd be fine for a capacitor, but for that chip, uh, no. And that's not even the finest pin pitch you might do by hand. There's actually picks that are worse than that. <laughs> I've got a little surface mount crystal here, and it's quite small. So using a surface mount crystal in this package can save you a lot of space. Now surface mount isn't always smaller. Um, you know, here's an eight megahertz crystal. Here's the same part in surface mount. It actually actually takes up more space, you know. It's surface mount though, but you know, why use this when you can use this little guy? It does the same thing, and it's much smaller. And it's smaller on the X, Y, and the Z. All right, I'm gonna attach the rest of the passives. One thing I don't like about surface mount is, you know, it's meant to be done by a machine. So when I take out these three chips, they're going to land usually upside down. See, there's three chips and 66% of them landed upside down. And I don't like to apply them upside down. So I usually just pick them up and drop them again. And there's a pretty good chance they will go right side up after you drop them. So that's my, that's my way <laughs> of applying them right side up. And I'm going to apply all the same values in one shot. So I'm going to apply all of the 75, 75 ohm resistors first, then I'll do the 10K, and then I'll do the 150s, which are the bulk of the resistors. There's so many connectors. Audio visual adapters. Fast plane connectors. Shakya. Memory sockets. Coaxial. It's hard to keep them all straight. Beats of miniature. Fiber optic. I.O. All right. There's basically a bajillion of them. Like this and this. So, so many. I can't even name them all. You really have to push on the plunger to make the pace come out. Luckily, decades of video game playing have made my thumbs as strong as iron. These surface mount resistors, there's something that can happen if you don't hit both sides of the paste with them properly. Yeah, it can actually cause it to flip up on end. Stand up like a tombstone. And you're like, oh no, my solder job has died. And now it has a tombstone your favorite movie, which was awesome, 1994. Wait, no, 1993, oh my God. I'm losing my power. So my superpower that I haven't found a way to use to fight crime, but still, is I know what year every movie came out within my lifetime, but only within my lifetime, just like how in Quantum Leap, he could only travel within his own lifetime. So Allison, uh, name, name a movie. Big Trouble in Little China. 1986. Terminator 2. 1991. <laughs> God, I'm good at this. Time to put this into the reflow oven. Then afterwards, we'll attach the through hole parts. Ooh, just barely fits, but it fits. Oh, I cooked a goose. 
So a few things we need to fix on the board. Uh, this chip, for instance, has a bridge on it. See that right there? We just hit that with the iron and pull it out. And these pins, they probably are connected, but I'm just gonna hit them a little bit just to make sure. She was tempted by the dark side of commerce. Now she is gone. The pins here are much finer pitch, so more of them have bridged. And it's kind of hard to go in there and individually um, take the bridges out. So I'm going to do is use some solder wick. And I can press it against the bridge pins and basically pull the solder out that way. I don't want to pull too much solder out though because then we won't have a connection. See? All right, I got rid of all the bridges on the PIC microcontroller and everything else is looking good. So even though I had to go back and touch up a few things, the time that that took was still a lot less than manually soldering all of these things because not just the fact that you have to solder them all, but um, you know, holding one of these little surface mount resistors in place and then hitting it with a solder, that's actually kind of hard to do because you can't solder both sides at once, so it'll tend to tip up and whatnot. So uh, yeah, even though, you, even though I'm still doing some hand soldering, the reflow oven saved me a lot of time. All right, so next I'm gonna put on the through hole components. Now, surface mount isn't just used because it's smaller. Uh, one big reason is because you don't have to have holes going through the PCB. And if you don't have holes going through the PCB, you don't have to worry about what's on the bottom of the board. So like in this case, you know, this USB connector takes up quite a bit of real estate on the top and the bottom of the board. So what if we needed this space on the bottom of the board for traces? Well, you know, we wouldn't be able to do that if we had a through hole part like we do here. I'm just using the through hole part because we don't need that much space on the bottom of the board. And you know, through hole parts, they're easier to solder by hand. And they, you know, they have better mechanical retention because these pins are going through the vias to the bottom of the board and whatnot. In the case of these switches and this connector here, I want them on the bottom of my board so they can be at the back of the unit. Now if I was just using my reflow oven, obviously I couldn't reflow something upside down. I don't have that capability, but the through hole part stays in place and I can solder it by hand. Again, there's only a few things on this that are soldered by hand. Well, including the LEDs. I could have done the LEDs in surface mount, but I just like the look of uh, five millimeter LEDs and how they kind of have like a physicality to them. And I made sure that the positive lead on the LEDs, which is the longer lead, was always on the left hand side. That way. I don't have to put much thought into it. Now, this is a problem. It's like, oh no, it fell out, right? So what I like to do is, um, let's put this in here. Put that. Let's get these four loaded up. Okay, I just do a quick flip. Okay, so if I push this down, this will bring these pretty far up. And what I like to do is I'll just hit one, just slight hit on one side. Now what I can do is I can pull pull it tight, and that ensures that the LED is flat against the PCB on the other side. See these ground pins require a lot more heat. And we're not in the oven anymore. Now here's a big advantage to surface mount, not having to cut leads. I mean, I always save these leads and use them for prototyping. But you know, imagine if all these resistors, I mean, you don't just have the LEDs, like what if every resistor had two leads on it, as well as the capacitors? I mean, not only is that a lot of manual snipping, but it just, it's a lot of waste and it just takes a lot of time. So that's another advantage to surface mount, no leads. <laughs> There you have it. All the surface muck components have been attached using the reflow oven. Then I manually inserted the larger through hole components. And of course you want to put surface mount on first because sometimes once you put the larger stuff on, it's harder to get at the surface mount. 
So this shows how even though your whole project might not be all surface mount, it still helps to use as much of it as possible. Not just because it's smaller, but with a easy to build refill oven, it's just a lot easier to attach. You'll save yourself a lot of time. Just put some paste down, place the components, stick in the oven, and you're done. It's time for me to resume my role as the world's greatest ice fighter. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, I'm going to finally build an Ouya portable by popular request. We'll see you then. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com.